What's up guys? So it's been a while and I've been crazy busy, but uh, it's time for a new screencast. So lately I've been working with a client that had this insane bug. Uh, we got an exception that said that the transaction scope was already complete. But all we really did was trying to read some data. So we weren't even trying to work with a transaction. But the system is transaction heavy, so we were using distributed tra transactions in other connections. Uh, so uh, and it turned and it turned out that in Hibernate was leaking connections because we were using the async await keywords together with VCF distributed transactions. So I've recreated uh, the scenario in a pretty simple solution. Uh, so let's check it out and try to figure out how to solve this. So what we have in front of us is a simple client so first of all, our solution contains three projects. We have a simple console client, a common library which contains uh, the service interfaces and entities, and a service uh, or a, an application project that hosts two different services. So our program is really simple. We start off two different threads. One thread is reading, it is writing, and the other thread is reading. And we are writing and reading from two different uh, services for the main purpose just to illustrate that uh, we are getting this transaction scope was already complete error even if we are trying to just fetch data from a service that doesn't even try to use transactions. So our read service client here is fetching data from a read service that has this simple interface with one operation. It tries to read data and it doesn't have a service behavior. So if we go to the implementation, we can see here we aren't using any transactions or whatsoever. We're just calling this service method read data and then we are using this uh, database abstraction class which has two implementations. So we're gonna focus on the Enhybrain implementation. So we are creating a session factory and when we read the data, we just open the session uh, and do an hibernate begin transaction and commit it. Uh, and this is best practice. So even though we are only reading data, we will create a, a transaction using the session. And then we just return uh, all the items in a, in a table. And our entity here is super simple. It just contains an ID and a message. And that's what the first thread is doing. We're just fetching data and we are printing to the console how many items we've fetched from the server. And then in our write thread, we are creating a transaction from the client which we are flowing to our service. And we are flowing it to a different service. And we can see here that our app service contains two uh, methods. And we want to have two methods. We want to create a distributed transaction. So as we could see here from the client, we are creating a, a scope and we are, selling, we are telling it that the transaction scope async flow option is enabled, which makes us able to use the await keyword here on the client. And we are calling call async, and then we are completing the scope. And if we go to the implementation of call async, this is the proxy, so we want to go to the server. In the constructor of the server, we are creating a new service proxy to a different instance of the same service. So we are so when we're calling from the client, we'll hit this operation right here, and then we'll make a distributed transaction by by wrapping this in an inner scope, once again with the transaction scope async flow option enabled because we want to use the async, uh, the await keyword. And we are calling a different instance of the same service and we are calling a write method. And the write method simply uses the DB abstraction once again. Let's take a look at the in hybrid implementation. And instead of just fetching data now, we are saving an item and uh, committing a transaction. So that's what this thread is doing. We are, once again, if we start from the client, 
we create a proxy and we have we are flowing a transaction scope from the client to the service and the service interface has a transaction flow option uh, set to allowed so we are allowed to flow a transaction from the client and in the call async method we are creating we are doing a service to service call to a different instance of the same service which will write to the database and what happens now is pretty interesting so let's press f5 and we are reading data a lot more often that, than we are writing and that's just because we want to get the exception when we read data when we're not even using a transaction so soon enough I think now we'll get an exception and now let's take a look at the call stack let's hope that we got the exception when trying to read the data and yes so we are simply just trying to read data and when we create our factory uh, so it's even before we get to our operation on our service since we can see that we are getting it once we are building our factory and what is the exception that the transaction scope is already complete so what's happened here is that we have a connection leak uh, in the VC in the VCF dispatcher when we are getting proxies from the pool so it turns out that and hibernate isn't thread safe at all so if you stop this and take a look here in our app service and then in the call async here we are doing a wait and we are uh, mixing VCF uh, transactions with Inhibernate transactions it doesn't really handle this await keyword good at all so what we've done we don't use the await key keyword at the server at all so to fix this problem we need to remove the awaits keyword and then just wait for a result and now we can remove the async here but we're still gonna need to return a result task from result so let's say true and you can see here that I can actually remove the transaction scope with the async flow option enabled past then because that's only there for a sole purpose of being able to do a wait and I've talked about this in a separate screencast which I'll link in the description as well so by simply removing all the await keywords from the uh, server side code will uh, make this problem go away and this was really hard to find uh, imagine working in a large distributed complex enterprise system and with hundreds of methods and services so let's run this again by hitting F5 and once again attach the debugger to the v3p process and now this will be able to run forever exactly as we are expecting it to run so problem solved don't use the await keyword on the server side when you're using vcf together with and hibernate so this will be able to run forever we can just stop it here one thing though i tried the same thing with entity framework so let's switch to entity framework both on the write service and on the read service and the entity framework implementation just news up an app db context and in the get method we just list all the items and in the write method we just add an item to the items collection and save the changes so really simple a lot simpler than in hibernate so we want to save these changes yes and now and of course this will work but we'll also be able to do this using the await keyword so if you want to have async and await on the server side we could do so using entity framework and now we don't need to return the task there and we're gonna need to add the async keyword to the method so now we are back and let's rebuild this and hit f5 and yeah one more thing actually so we have a difference here between an hibernate and the framework um, 
if you take a look in my entities and in, in my item uh, poco I'll need to remove the virtual keyword from the ID property when using entity framework so now if we hit F5 you can attach the debugger and we're doing the same thing with entity framework but this time we won't get the the transaction scope was already complete exception even though we are using the async and await keywords on the server and to my surprise here we can see that I've actually got the same exception with entity framework as well so uh, I was wrong I thought that entity framework was handling uh, the the, the thread safety a lot better than in Hibernate, but it turns out that we can get this exception with in Hibern with Entity Framework as well. And this is the first time I've gotten this exception. I just threw together the solution, so uh, I haven't been running the Entity Framework code for so long at all. But here we got it, black and white. Uh, we get the same exception with Entity Framework. So the key takeaway here, instead of uh, saying that Entity Framework uh, handles this is that probably we shouldn't be using the async and the await keyword at the server level at all. So you're, you're a lot safer with just doing synchronous calls on the server. And if we are using uh, asynchronous proxies, we should probably use them in a synchronous manner. So once again, we don't want to create this inner transaction scope, which is there for the sole purpose of for us to be able to use the wait keyword. We should probably do something like this as we did with an hibernate for entity framework as well. So, so I hope that you've saved some time by looking at this tutorial if you have similar issues. So until next time, have a nice day guys. Bye.